Hello, my name is Queen Bee. I am one of the fairies from Fairyland. I am a human as well, and I have human problems as well. Everybody has problems, and that's okay. And sometimes being friends with fairies can help those problems. So I'm here and I've been instructed to give some answers to some questions for people who have questions for Fairyland. So I have a little helper behind the scenes. Um, we're gonna call her CJ to start with, but she is definitely en route to being the Princess of Winter. She has asked me to get on YouTube to help answer some questions that she and her friends have been having about Fairyland. So this is my first video and welcome to my channel. As I mentioned, my name is Queen Bee and I have been a fairy for a while now. Sometimes I wear different crowns. One of the questions that CJ had was, what type of fairies are there? There are a lot. There are a lot of different types of fairies. So I think the best thing to do is if anyone who has a question about a particular type of fairy that maybe they've had contact with or maybe they want to know more about, I think that is an easier way um, to answer that question is to actually have people ask me what is a fern fairy which was CJ's next question so a fern fairy which is why I've got a fern tiara on today is because I went into fairyland and I went and found a fern one of these ones you know and I had a little think and I had a little meditation and I did some deep breathing like this. So maybe you would like to do a deep breath too. You can breathe in your nose and out your mouth is sometimes really relaxing so we can do that together. So breathing in through the nose. and out through the mouth. So for me, that's sometimes how I get into fairyland, is when I do a lot of repetitions of that, then it helps me. Um, also, if I'm sitting out in nature, maybe by a creek or at the beach or something like that, maybe I have a special I have a special room. Maybe you do too. You could create a special room or a special space where you can do that deep breathing and you can access your own fairyland and have questions for me for this YouTube channel. So, one of CJ's questions, as I said, was, "What is a fern fairy?" I got there by doing that meditation down by a creek because that's where ferns are. There are a lot of ferns by the creek. And I sat there for a while and I thought, hmm, I wonder what a fern fairy does and what their job is. And I was watching the creek and I saw all of these dragonflies, like the real story. I saw all of these dragonflies. And they were hovering above the water, like, and I thought, hmm, they're probably fairy lifeguards. Yep. So for me, a dragonfly, when it's hovering over water, is keeping an eye on the fairies to make sure that their wings don't get wet and they don't get drowned in the water in the creek or anything nasty like that. So they keep a watchful eye out for all of the fairies. Because I noticed that when the leaves were falling from the trees into the creek, it looked like a surfboard. So that's when I realized that a fern fairy's job is to provide fun. 
So what a fern fairy does is it lives in the ferns. In these leaves here, they will live underneath them. And what they do is, if you can imagine this part of the fern attached in a fern bush, they hold it back and then they go pew! And it catapults a fairy that's there to have fun, could be any type of fairy, and it catapults a fairy like this, pew, and it goes, Shoo! and the fairy flies faster than it can with just its wings. The fairy catches the leaf as the leaf floats down to the creek, and then that's how the fairies go surfing in the creek. So the role of the fern fairy is they're kind of like mechanics you know they pull the fern back as the fairy sits on top they pull the fern back and then pew, shoots the fairy up to the leaf so that the the fairy can ride the leaf down through the air and catch a ripple in the creek when you're at the creek and that's why the dragonflies are there to make sure that no one drowns because dragonflies are the lifesavers of like the creek area. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's pretty much what a fern fairy does. Um, a fern fairy can really be any sort of color, but really they're going to be more of that greeny, browny coloring. Um, it's, most of them have brown hair, green eyes, green hair, brown eyes, that sort of stuff. There are, you know, a couple of blonde, a couple of red heads, but um, you got to think when you, when you see a fern or when you see a flower or when you see a plant, usually the color of that plant or the flower or the crystal, that is usually the color of like the fairy itself, be it the fairy dress, the, the man fairy's um, wings or shorts or hair or eyes or so any sort of combination of any of those things are going to be the combination of the colors that the fairy lives in. So whatever planet, maybe it's a lavender plant and they're a purple fairy, maybe it's a rose bush and they're red or pink or white fairies. So there's all of these different types of plants and all of these different types of colors that fairies can be. Now fairies usually mostly live in nature, um, but they can help around the house and they can help you clean your crystals, which brings me to CJ's next question. She asked me, um, because she and I have been very, very good friends for a very long time, um, and for a very long time I have told her that um, crystals can, like fairies can clean the crystals. So I'm talking crystals like the rocks on my, the rings on my fingers and these types of magical rocks. This one that's in my tiara. And um, things like this. I'll show you a couple. This is amethyst. Maybe you have some of this stuff at home. These, this is a raw amethyst. So it's like pretty purple and, and kind of like, you can see it's kind of spiky. Um, maybe you've got some Rose quartz, this is a big piece. It's like, rose quartz is just like full of love and makes you all lovey. It's really beautiful. And this is a big piece. This is also quite raw. See so yeah, how it's shiny because it's polished, but it's still got like those jagged bits. Then we have um, other crystals as well um, that are like polished. See how this is like, this is like way more smoother. This is again um, purple, so have a look at that. We, we're going to know that that one is amethyst because it matches these ones. So this is actually the same crystal. Um, all of the crystals on my finger are different and we can go into them in another video. But these are both amethyst. Um, and I'm just going to give you one more, two more examples of crystals. Um, this one is a polished stone. So again, smooth, and this is clear quartz. So these four crystals that I'm showing you are probably going to be crystals that most beginners start out with. These are the 
probably the four main crystals that um, people that are just starting starting their collection will more than likely have in their collection. These were definitely my first few rocks. Um, amethyst was my very, very first rock, was a piece of amethyst. And the last stone I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you this because it's, again, a different style. Um, it's more of a raw stone, but has been cut. Um, see how here we've got some points? It's a little bit clear and a little bit, got little black bits in it. So this is smoky quartz. So these are the four crystals that most beginners are going to start out with. And CJ's question to me was, why did the fairies not clean my crystals? And I asked her, well, did you ask them to? And she said, no. I said, well, you have to ask them. And two, it's very important to know which ones need cleaning because the fairies aren't going to just come and clean your entire room for you if you haven't prepared it for them. So if you've got all of your crystals on like the window sill, you have to hold them because I know that's where CJ's are on the windowsill. So she's getting the moonlight, which is a great way to cleanse your crystals by the moon. Um, but for a fairy to come and clean your crystals, you need to hold each one. So this smoky quartz here, I can hold it. I'm just going to hold it here like this. And I'm going to think to myself, does this rock need cleaning? And maybe I'll do I'll do a breath here, so you, you can do this too if you're going to test your rocks to see what your rocks need. You breathe in, now through the mouth, and I can feel that that that's like in the maybe pile. Maybe that needs a clean because you don't want to give the fairies too many jobs. This one here, this little um, smoky cords, that one doesn't need a clean. I I just know it doesn't. I can feel it. I feel it. I go. Nah, he's okay. So, I will show you this one. I know I can feel it. I felt it before as soon as I picked it up. I'm like, mmm, this one needs a bit of fairy magic love and a little bit of cleaning. So, I'm going to put that in a different pile so I know that that's, so I can direct the fairies and say, excuse me, fairies, can you please come and clean this particular pile of rocks? Because otherwise, you might have a collection of a hundred or more and they don't have that much time they're pretty busy so there's lots of things that fairies need to do and if you want them to come and clean your rocks you need to know and you need to tell them which ones need cleaning so we'll just keep going with the process with these rocks that i've shown you and the amethyst one i'm just going to hold that And I think, I think that one might need a bit of a clean. So I'm going to leave that one out for the fairies too. Um, clear quartz. Yeah, definitely needs a clean. Yeah. That can go in the cleaning pile, please. No, this one's happy. Yeah. This one's, this one's all good. This one, that one's happy. And last but not least, this one is fine. This one does not need cleaning right now. It's so big that it kind of, it, it stores its own energy. And we can talk about the energy of crystals another time. But for now, that's my first YouTube video. Um, I'm going to try and keep them all um, within 15 minutes for you guys. So you can just know what's happening. I'm going to make sure that the titles are really clear. Please like and subscribe and hopefully I will get an Instagram up soon which you guys will be able to follow too. So just remember that um, to be a fairy it's the, probably the most important thing is to be nice to yourself. So positive affirmations and 
um, saying nice things to yourself and being nice to other people. That's probably one of the major rules of being a fairy because sometimes they can be really, really cheeky and sometimes they can be really, really mean. But if you want to be like a queen or a princess or if you if you want to be the best fairy that you can possibly be, then that's the, probably the best place to start. Um, also, send me any questions about crystals because I have lots of them. All right, love and light, fairy delight. Mwah!